Looks like we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another Zuzin session. How about that? Let's make a little bit of an announcement and officially start the stream, I suppose. So uh, let me quickly make an announcement on our Discord server. So, and what are we doing today, right? So I need to do my usual format thingy. Uh, live on Twitch. Uh, it's not really particularly convenient on my desk. So today we're trying uh, the famous language for the first time ever. That's right. Um, remember how I was joking that this language doesn't exist, right? Saying that, look, I, I don't have it. Where is that language? It doesn't exist. Apparently, uh, it does exist. Uh, so, and I've got the copy of the Jai Beta. So, I was invited into the Jai Beta by um, uh, Meme Hufford. Thank you, thank you so much for sending me an invite. So, I suppose the Beta went into a stage where, like, uh, other people could invite uh, like one friend and uh, yeah i'm extremely honored to actually try it out so i decided to stream sort of like my first experience with this language right so i tried like a couple of simple things like i wrote hello world just check that everything works on my machine but apart from that i didn't try to do anything else right so i wanted this to be sort of like my first impression but doing the first impression on such language, it is important to keep in mind that this language is not finished. This is very, very important. So it is not finished. That means there could be bugs. Uh, some of the things, as, as far as I can understand, a lot of things in this language will be changed in the actual release, right? So the, the syntax is not finalized, some of the semantics are not finalized, uh, some of the things are missing because they're not implemented, there could be bugs because the language could be changing, and so on and so forth. So uh, it is quite important to keep that in mind while doing the first impression, right? So whatever you see here on the stream might be actually different in a, in a public release. So it's very, very important because again, the language is not finished. So, um, I don't know, um, let's give it a try. So if you never heard about this language before, I recommend you to check out the playlist that the Jonathan Blow himself composed, where he made different streams, presentations on explaining the justification for this language. Uh, so this is a, like a um, programming language for games playlist. So I'm gonna give you that list in the, uh, in the chat. And also you can find it in the description if you're watching on YouTube, right? So let's go ahead and unbox the, the, the language, I suppose. I already unboxed it, but I didn't unbox it on this uh, specific machine. So let's actually unzip uh, this real quick, right? So as you can see, we have uh, Linux executable, executables, Windows executables. As far as I know, Mac OS executables are not shipped right now because something is probably not working there, but we're using Linux, so it's fine. Uh, there's also a lot of examples and uh, there is also like a pretty extensive tutorial on how to use different features uh, of the language, though if I understand correctly, not everything is documented properly because again, the, the language is not finished. And there is a lot of modules uh, with different functionality and also a lot of different wrappers for different things. Uh, so, which is actually kind of cool. So if we take a look at this kind of stuff. So uh, maybe not examples, but modules, right? So yeah, we have OpenGL, uh, OpenGL bindings and stuff like that. The famous get wrecked. So different hash, I'm GUI. If you want to use I'm GUI, you, you can have I'm GUI, right? Why not? So, uh, mu hash, of course. Yeah, of course, there is a mu hash. Um, Objective C, probably for metal stuff. I don't know. I never actually developed for macOS, so I don't really know how stuff works there. There's SDL. So, if you want to use SDL, apparently you can do that. Uh, simp, as far as I know, it's the like standard library SDL, like a competitor to SDL. Um, different STB stuff, right? Right, STB image, like resize and write, they are available here if you want them. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here, like pretty much anything you want to use, like in multimedia, uh, it's there. Like it's not completely finished, but it's like kind of a standard library, which is kind of cool. Right. Anyway, so um, yeah, let's try to write like a hello world, right? So let's do hello, Jai. No, not jar. It's not Java. Hello, <laughs> Jai. Right, so if I remember correctly, 
Right, so the, the main function is main, right? And then you sort of say that it's sort of compile time equals, right? If I remember correctly, double colon is sort of like a compile time equals. Uh, and then you define like a, like a lambda function. So I think this is how roughly the syntax looks like, but I'm not 100% sure. And then you can do print, right? So you can say print and you can say hello uh, world and that should work. But as far as I know, it's not going to work because you need to include print from somewhere. Uh, right, so let's actually try, give it a try. So I'm gonna do enjoy bin. Uh, Linux and let me try to build this entire thing. So as you can see, yeah, uh, so print is not defined. I don't really remember where it is defined. We can go into the modules and uh, I think it's defined in basics, but I want to try one cool thing. Right, so what if, what if I search for print uh, double colon? So I saw that trick um, in the one life's left stream. So he suggested like, if you want to find the definition of a function in, in this language, you can just like grab for the name of the function colon colon. And that way you can find all of the definitions quite quickly. And there you go. So print is basically located in basics, <laughs> basically located in basics. Uh, all right, so, and uh, if I remember correctly, you just import this thing, so you say basic. Uh, right, so if I try to, I, I want you to compile it. All right, so there we go. Semicolon is required, okay, sure. And yeah, apparently it managed to compile this entire thing, All right? So let's give it a try. So we've got an executable, right? So that's pretty cool. Uh, let me take a look. So it's a LF64 bit executable, so it's a native executable. Dynamically linked, not statically linked though, uh, with debug information and it's not stripped. So I suppose I could be able to GDB it, but maybe I also have to have a special flag, I'm not sure. And let's take a look at what it depends on, right? So what libraries? It doesn't really depend on much. Uh, lib p thread because we are living in 2022, right? So you need to have multi-threading. Uh, we also depend on the math library, right? Of course, it's language for the games. So you need math to write games. If your game doesn't require math, well, what kind of game is it actually? I don't know. Maybe maybe something very discreet because usually lib math is needed for continuous stuff with floats, you know, uh, sine, cosine, and whatnot. So libc, of course, libdl and uh, librt probably for dynamic linking and stuff. So it doesn't really depend on much. Uh, and if we take a look at hello, there we go, here's hello. I'm so, oh my God, I'm sorry. You're not supposed to say hello world, you're supposed to say hello sailor. How, how could I forget? How could I forget? You're supposed to say hello sailor. I'm really sorry for such a disrespectful language. Uh, but yeah, there we go. So uh, yeah, there we go, hello sailor. Hello, hello everyone. So, so far so good. I really like how this language uh, actually just works, right? So that's actually pretty cool. Mm. Some board, yeah, yeah. So essentially like any discrete game, like board games pr probably don't need mathematical library of C, right? Because it's primarily focused on floats and stuff like that. Uh, yay land six, thank you so much for Twitch Prime. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you guys doing? <clears throat> so, uh, to 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 to. Uh, I'm just looking at the chat, like looking for some questions, maybe. Uh, Alright. So here is an interesting thing, right? One of the things you can do. Right, you can do compile time evaluation, right? So essentially, there is a directive called run, and you can say, okay, run main, and it will run this entire thing during the compilation, right? So semicolon expected in here. Yeah, there we go. So as you can see, it run this at compile time, but also it generated an executable that runs the same function at runtime. Right, so this is basically the famous feature of, uh, of this language that you can like take any code and run it at compile time. Right, so which actually makes it convenient for like scripts because here, as you can see, I just like run this thing at compile time. Uh, but it's not particularly convenient in a sense that it generates a lot of like a debug output of the compiler itself. Right, as far as I know, I think you can just ask it to be quiet 
Uh, right, so can, can you say be quiet? I, I swear to God there was like a way to say be quiet, but it's not documented. Right, so I remember that I just tried to do uh, quiet and it actually worked, kind of. Uh, maybe I just spell it incorrectly because I don't speak English, I'm really sorry, quiet. Yeah, there we go. So it's, you, you can do it like that. Which also probably means that you can take this thing and create a shebang out of that. Right, but here's the interesting thing. The hash is usually used for the compile time directives, right? Would shebang actually work in here? So in, in shebang, you're supposed to put like a full path in here. So it has to be home, uh, streamer, and uh, I think software, right? So we have to put software here. Let me double check that this file exists. Yeah, it seems to be existing, yeah, so it does exist. Right, so that means you can just like use it as a script, I think. Can can you use it as a script? It is actually quite interesting. I think I think you should be able to. Um, right, so hello, J. Yeah, you can use it as a script. That's actually pretty cool, <laughs> right? <laughs> so you you can yeah. So it's a script that actually compiled itself also into the into the executable, right? So if you just like remove this entire thing. <laughs> It's actually quite funny, I really like that. So it's a script that compiles itself and also runs itself, right? So you, you also have an executable version of the script. I'm not sure how useful it is. I, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm focusing on such an, a not important thing. Um, but yeah, I guess you can do that. <laughs> so I was worried that because hash is used for, um, for sort of like a macro thing, it would not properly work with Shebang, but apparently that taken care of, right? So. It is aware of shebang. So, but does it mean that the hash is used as the as the comments? I don't think so. I don't think it's used as a comment. So if I try to do something like that. So yeah, it's an invalid top level directive print. Okay, uh, but that works. Does it mean that hash exclamation mark acts like a comment? No. Hmm. That is very interesting. Uh, yeah. I suppose it is probably hard-coded to specifically just ignore these first two symbols in the file. I think. I have a feeling. I don't know why I'm, like, again, I don't know why I'm focusing on that, but it's just like, you know, my OCD uh, forces me to, to, to think about that. It, it's not important, by the way. It's not important, just something interesting. Mm -mm. All right, so we can do different things. Uh, right, so if I remember correctly, um, it has a pretty cool, at least I saw that on, on the streams, right? So you can do for loop, but you can just say like, okay, loop from zero to 10, right? And you don't even have to specify the iterator because it creates like an implicit iterator called it, uh, right? And it's kind of like a feature, I th think it was inspired by Perl, right? Perl probably doing the same thing, like a similar thing, uh, right? And you can do something like print uh, this thing, there we go. And there we go. So as, as you can see, it printed from zero to 10. So you can have like these four loops, which is rather, rather convenient. Uh, yeah, so in Perl, it's, yeah, it's dollar underscore, right? It is dollar underscore, right? What about nested for loops? Well, I mean, it's probably gonna be only for the inner loop, right? So, and if you wanna have a name, I suppose you have to do something like this, I think. I think if I remember correctly, right? Because my all of my knowledge of this language comes from just watching streams, right? So I'm like trying this thing for the first time, essentially. Uh, okay, so let's actually try to do something interesting. So there's also .build folder, right? So it creates some sort of .build folder where it puts some object files, uh, right? And if we take a look at object files, the, they are add files, okay? Because we're on Linux, all right. So there is a lot of examples in here, right, that uh, demonstrate different like functionality. Um, and the most interesting one is probably Invaders. It's the famous Invaders uh, game that uh, John showed um, on one of his demos, right? So, and let's actually give it a try because it's quite important to make sure that this thing works. So uh, I think I'm gonna try to yeah, I'm gonna go here, right, and I'm gonna try to call it like this. So bin Linux, and let's try to compile invaders Jai. So there is some problem in here, right? It cannot find 
uh, some libraries, right? So it complains about some, you know, system library stuff. And this is primarily because uh, a lot of things are tested only on Ubuntu uh 1804 or something like that i don't quite remember i, I think it was in the readme somewhere uh yeah so it's it's primarily tested for this specific operating system and i suppose a lot of things are hard coded for that uh, operating system and the reason is because the language is unfinished it's really important to say that because people don't understand that uh right so uh this is a beta and the language is definitely not finished so as you can see there are some problems sometimes and this is because I'm not using Ubuntu, I'm using an old Debian, right? So new fetch. if you take a look at my new fetch, I'm using Debian and actually quite the old one. It's not just stable Debian, it's an old stable Debian. Um, isn't it impressive that you can have a compiler that is single executable? I know, right? Something like Swift, if you're not using a correct operating system, you're supposed to be using a Docker container. Think about that, a Docker container for a program that takes one stream of bytes and produces another stream of bytes, nothing else. That's the entire compile, com compiler. It's a pure function from one stream of uh, bytes to another stream of bytes. And for Swift, if you have not a standard environment, you need to have a Docker container for a function that maps one byte to another byte. 2022 software development, by the way. So <laughs> it's 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 really madness. It is. Mm. Drop security easy, <laughs> exactly. Uh, John, oh, he he fixed it. I, I saw his streams. I actually caught his streams like at the end, and I didn't really know he actually fixed everything. So I suppose it's actually pretty good that he fixed it. Mm -mm. All right. So, all right. The problem is, the problem is, if we take a look at what is going on, right? So we go in here. Um, so it uses the system library libgl uh, for glx, glx, not glx, x. Uh, I need to speak English in here. But it uses foreign library for libx11. I looked into this problem a little bit before the stream. I just wanted to make sure that everything worked before, before the stream, but I didn't try to write anything like, you know, substantial in that language. So I still don't know this language, All right? So, and what that means, I suppose, I suppose that means that it's gonna be using this libx11 library that ships with the compiler, right? I suppose that like it just pre-compiled things so you don't have to like, you know, have it, uh, have it system-wide, but that causes problems, right? Because I think this thing depends on something uh, that I simply don't have or depends on something, um, yeah, so it causes all sorts of problems. So the way I fixed it is basically I said, okay, instead of like using libx11 that ships with the language, use my system library, right? I think this is how it works. And that actually fixed the problem. So now I should be able to compile the entire thing. Uh, right, so that's the only problem I encountered with this language so far. And it's understandable the language is not finished and I'm using the environment that is not tested on. Right. So this thing was tested specifically on Ubuntu and this is like an old Debian. So it's completely understandable that it didn't work on my own. Right? Uh, so what I had to do, I just had to say, uh, just use my system library. Maybe I can do that without modifying the standard library. I don't know. Maybe there is a way to do that without modifying the standard library, like with a meta program or something like that. Uh, but uh, for now, I just like modify the standard library and it's fine. Uh, so there's a lot of bindings in here and stuff like that. So we managed to compile the invaders, right? So, and we should have an executable of the game, of the famous game. So let's give it a try. Does it even work? So it's supposed to have sounds as well, right? Uh, so invaders, there we go. So this is the game. So, and I can shoot and stuff like that. So yeah. And I really like how it only had like one problem. And it simply just works. So, <laughs> it's so cool, I really like that. Right. Isn't it nice when things like just work? Almost work. Well, I, I still had to fix something, but I mean, it's just like the language is not finished. If it was finished, it would just work, I suppose. So, uh, yeah, and this game is written entirely in this language, which is kind of cool. So, and we have the source code of the game. 
right? So we have the source code of the game. That means I have a pretty extensive example on how to write such games, right? So I have a pretty extensive example on how to create window, right? Uh, also how to load sound. And this is a working example. I can just run this example and see how it works, right? So I can load different sounds. And um, everything is actually pretty straightforward. All of the functions are really readable, like load audio file, play sound. Uh, you don't have to create abstract bin factories, whatever the fuck it is. If you want to play sound, you just say, play sound. Why would you need anything else, right? So if you want to load sound, you just say load, uh, load sound. It's pretty straightforward. So there's also an example on how to organize the event loop and so on and so forth. So since I have such an extensive example on how to write simple games in this language, so I thought, why not just implement a simple game as the first project in this language? I mean, this language was designed for game development and I think it would do it a justice to implement a game in it, right? So because that's what this language was designed for in the first place. Though the thing that is designed for games is applicable to more things, right? Because game is not what, uh, what people think, right? Mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm. So, anyway, so snake game, like I implemented snake game so many times. And in fact, I think somebody already implemented a snake game. Yeah, somebody already did that. So I don't think it's a very unique or interesting idea. Uh, right, so, and there's a bunch of ideas in here. So we can actually try to compile this entire thing. I'm really curious. So there is some sort of interesting pattern that the root jai file is called uh, first. Yeah, I was also thinking about Tetris, so we can try to implement Tetris, why not? Um, I think uh, this is something that I wanted to implement for quite some time. Uh, I never implemented Tetris in my entire life, right, because I'm not a game developer. I'm, I'm pretty sure professional game developers implemented uh, all of the classical games, right, so they probably implemented ping pong, Tetris, tic-tac-toe, snake, and at least uh, as, a, as an exercise, but I'm not a game developer, so I never implemented this. Uh, all right, so, and I noticed an interesting pattern is that uh, the root file that you're supposed to use is the first JI, and that's also a build file that just builds everything, which is an interesting pattern, right? So let's give it a try. I'm going to say first, and let's see what it's going to do. Mm, so it did some things. It didn't tell us what it did, but it also created uh, dot build. Uh, okay. So there's also run tree uh, where I suppose I have an executable. So here it is. So essentially everything is put into run tree. Do we even have a run tree somewhere? Okay. So it's really interesting how uh, some sort of a convention is sort of forming in this community, right? So you're supposed to have first.jai and you're also supposed to have run tree. And uh, I, I saw a lot of projects actually follow them con that convention, so to speak, uh, which is actually a pretty interesting convention. Anyway, so let's actually try to run this snake game and see if it actually works. It should work, I think. Uh, uh, holy shit, that's actually pretty cool. It's three FPS. Okay, so I think this game is too powerful for my PC. <laughs> you have to keep in mind that this is a 10 years old laptop, right? It's a 10 years old laptop and I'm not only, uh, you know, using that laptop, I'm also streaming from that uh, laptop. So did the stream lag? Did the stream lag completely? Uh, because it, it's still working for me. Um, okay. Oh, all right. So I suppose it actually lacked a little bit. So yeah. Okay. Let's not run this game. I may try to run this game when I'm not streaming. Uh, so yes. Uh, okay. So it lacked. It was like one FPS. Okay. I see. Hmm. Interesting. All right, so let's not run this game because this game is too powerful for my 10 years old PC. Uh, actually, laptop. All right, if I, if I show you one more time. So here is a new fetch, right? So it's a Lenovo B410. And this is my... <laughs> and what's funny is that I don't even have a proper uh, drivers for my uh, for my 
NVIDIA card, right? So I'm using the built-in uh, graphics card that comes with Intel. So it is what it is, and it isn't what it isn't. This is because I'm not a game developer, right? So I don't need a, like a fancy hardware uh, for, for, for work. And on top of that, I just don't have any money for a better laptop. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a primary reason. Anyway, so let's actually try to make a game, right? So a simple game, not as powerful as the Snake game, but something closer to Invaders, right? So, and let's create a Tetris, right? So I'm pretty sure nobody created Tetris, so I'm gonna actually double check. Let's actually find file, uh, not necessarily file, like anything. Like, let's find something that contains Tetris in its name. Like anything that contains a Tetris. Okay, so nothing in the entire compiler uh, contains word Tetris, regardless of the case, right? So, regardless of the case, which is, which is nice, okay. That's pretty cool. So that means uh, we have an opportunity to implement uh, Tetris. So uh, just a disclaimer, the language is not finished. I don't know the language, right? <laughs> so you have to keep in mind these two things. I don't know the language and I'm trying to program in language that I don't know. So of course there will be some problems. The only thing I know is how to like compile things, how to import modules, how to do for loops roughly and how to print things. That's it. I don't know anything else, but I have a lot of examples from which I can copy paste. And that's what software development is about, right? It's not about knowing your language completely, all right? Because especially with a language that is not finished, it's about copy pasting, right? <laughs> well, at least it's also about understanding what you're copy pasting, right? Uh, okay, thank you for all the subs. People are subscribing and I forget to acknowledge them. So thank you so much, uh, yeah, Line 6 I already acknowledged that. I'm a robot. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Stan Lesism, Kalumna1. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Really, really appreciate all the subs. All right. So let's go ahead and maybe create a folder, right? Uh, maybe create a folder where we're going to be doing the Tetris stuff. So I'm going to go to my probe uh, and let's create a Tetris uh, Jai, right? Uh, Tetris Jai. Uh, okay, and I'm going to do Tetris Jai. There we go. So, and in here, I'm going to write uh, a hello world, right? A basic hello world. Uh, I keep forgetting, like I have a reflex to put this parenthesis in here and do it like that, but you're supposed to do it like this. So I suppose the idea is that this is compile time equal and main is equal to a function, to a specific value of a function. Hello Zora, thank you so much for 14 months. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, okay, so print, uh, hello sailor. Right. So, and let's try. So software, Jai, Beam, Jai, Linux, Tetris, Jai. Okay, so we're supposed to put a semicolon in here. Cool. So we have a hello world. So let's open uh, the uh, invaders example. I really like the invaders example because it doesn't really follow this fancy convention of having first.jai and also run tree because I haven't studied that convention yet. So I don't know about it. This invaders, it just like has a main and uh, that is basically it, right? So this is where it starts. So it also keeps track of the time. I'm not sure if I care about tracking time right now, Right, so I'm probably not gonna do that. The only thing I care about is I wanna create a window. So that's the only thing I wanna do. Okay, let's create a window. Right, so there we go, I copy pasted. So I suppose we have like named parameters in here, which is rather cool, right? It's like in Python, right? It's named parameters like in Python. It's pretty, pretty cool. Okay, so uh, let me go to modules. I want to actually find where this thing is defined. I really like this trick where... Thank you, One Life Slide, for suggesting this trick. It's actually a very useful trick, right? So you just like search for this thing and you can quickly find where this stuff is defined. So we have a window creation uh, and we have that for different platforms. Uh, okay, so this is how it's created. Uh, and on Linux, yeah, we use X11. Uh, and also, we're using GLX di directly, actually. That's actually pretty cool. Not using any GLFW or anything like that. It's just GLX directly. I really like that. So, fewer dependencies. Um, Miracle, thank you so much for uh, for the sub. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, do, 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 do. Mm, 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 mm. 
So, is Jai only made for games? Uh, how a game is different from any other piece of software? Mm -mm. So, the first that Jai thing was more prevalent early on when there wasn't such a fully featured default meta program. You basically had to write a build program yourself. Oh, basically, it's an old convention. For, for some reason, I thought it's a new convention. Apparently, it is an old convention. Okay. Uh, if you did anything outside the norm, but now I find you really need to. Okay. Um, games need to actually be performant. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> mm, all right. So, so that means I have to include uh, window creation. Do I just like directly? Include oh yeah apparently I do like I, it's it's literally the name of the uh, of the module window creation okay it's pretty straightforward I really like how straightforward some of the names are um, okay so I can try to build this entire thing and declared identifier windows uh, window width uh, can I do something like window width and since I want this thing to be compile time I probably have to do something like this right so would that work it, it did work okay so uh, I think I'm getting the gist of this language. Okay, that's pretty cool. Would you look at that? Hmm. All right. So can I now run the the Tetris? Uh, okay. So and it says hello seller, and it didn't do anything, right? It didn't even flash the window. Uh, maybe because it was never actually shown uh, or anything like that. So. Okay. Uh, so let me see. So then we have to do simp uh, set render target, right? So simp, as far as I know, is a separate module. Oh, that's actually very interesting. So you can import the module, but then you can assign it to a name, right? And colon colon is a compile time assignment, sort of speak, right? So this entire thing, if treated as an expression, sort of speak. Uh, returns a module as a value and you assign that value to that compile time variable if I understand this thing correctly I think uh, right. it kind of reminds me of a camel style of modules right so yeah I, I suppose a lot of different languages kind of inspired this language right because I can see like a little bit of Perl a little bit of that a little bit of a camel a little bit of other things right <clears throat> Mm, how did you get access to Jai? Oh, you better not know that. Mm, I might have done a lot of illegal things to get a copy of Jai. I'm joking, by the way. <laughs> so I got invited. I got invited by uh, people who wanted to see me program in this language. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, mm, mm, how long have you been programming for? In this language? I've been programming this language for 33 minutes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, um, oh, Kolmetko, what's up? What's up, Kolmetko? Um, <clears throat> all right. So let's try to do that and uh, set a render target. So suppose once you created the window, you have to set the render target. But here is an interesting thing. What does it do though? Um, mm -hmm. So let's do grep uh, set render target. Set render target. Uh, where is it? Uh, okay, so so there's a backend for that, and there's at least two for them. Oh, it has a function overloading. Oh, that's actually very cool. By the way, you know, I forgot to create like a shield behind my camera i always put something behind my webcam so i know what you can or cannot see so i can adjust things on the screen accordingly so it's actually very important so sometimes i don't know that you cannot see something um all right so it supports function overloading it's actually pretty cool um okay so set render target mm -hmm. it initializes some sort of a global state i can see right uh, okay, I guess. So probably it's abstracted away from me, so I probably shouldn't think about it too much. Okay, so let's try to compile this entire thing and also run it. And I saw a flash. Oh my god. I think I saw a flash. I think I saw a flash of the window. 
It's actually quite surprising that, like, yeah, I already created a window for a fraction of a second, which is already kind of impressive. Can you do the same thing in Python? Right. You have to set up virtual environment. You have to make sure that native dependencies properly compile when you do peep install and stuff like that. And it may not work at runtime because you don't have a specific uh, DLL or whatever. But here, I just created a window, I suppose. I mean, I had some problems with DLL, but um, it's understandable. Right, so... Yeah. Isn't that cool? I think it's pretty cool. Okay, so we create a sound player. I don't really want to have any sounds right now. So, and this game is not Invaders. This is a Tetris, right? Uh, so, okay, so loading sound. I don't want to load any sounds. Mm. You might think, hey, we can auto-generate this kind of thing from a list of strings with metaprogramming. We could, but this wouldn't allow us uh, the freedom to change file names. Uh, or rename a variable would break, or renaming a variable would break the, uh, the game in an intuitive way because there would be no corresponding sound file. So we do it uh, the simple dumb way. A shipping game would have some kind of asset catalog where you would use handles, or maybe just a string names when you play sound effects. Right. It's a simple game, a simple solution for a simple game. I do agree with that actually. Um, okay. So we just initialize something, so in textures. What I'm interested in is organizing the event loop. Okay, so here is the uh, event loop organization, which is which is nice. Should quit the game. It's a global variable that just tells you whether you should quit the game or not. Right, I'm not sure if I want to make it a global variable. Um, I usually make them like local to the, to the procedure, but it doesn't really matter. So I suppose it does a little bit of like a type inference, right? So you define a variable and it infers the type as boolean right it's like in go or something it's, it's kind of interesting right how you program this language and you notice like different things from different languages right like python go camel uh, Perl, and stuff like that that's actually pretty cool right so especially if you try different languages right um, okay so while not uh, shoot quit game we keep pulling events i suppose right so in here we clear the render target and I'm not really sure what the hell is that. Maybe this is a background color. This looks like a background color for sure. Uh, right, so maybe I can give it a try clear, render. Okay, so it's not here. Um, so let me find um, clear render target. Right, so and here it is. And yeah, there you go. So it, I like how simple everything is, right? So. <laughs> Right, in, in OpenGL you would do something like that. If you had different backend, uh, right, you probably would do something else, but yeah, it's just like abstracted away uh, stuff a little bit. Um, okay, so let me, let me see. Uh, in waiters, I'm probably gonna be using the same background color because why not? Uh, update window events. I'm not really sure what that is and where is it coming from? So is it part of the game or is it something that we have to it, it looks like it's something from the simp itself, right? Is it? Is it something? Okay, so it's probably... Updating uh, the events. Okay, it's something from the input. Okay, that's very interesting. So, and we do, do include input. Okay, uh, which is nice. All right, so let's actually do that. Mm -hmm. uh, module... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm input uh, update window ah, x11 update window events okay so you just have to call it you don't have to do anything here um all right so i'm gonna put it in here so i made sure that i understand everything and let's try to compile this entire thing i'm not gonna run it I uh, just want to make sure that it compiles. Okay, it does in fact compile. So probably there will be no way to quit it uh, while... Uh -huh. So get window resize. Hmm. Handle resizes in an actual scene drawing. Ooh, wait. So get window resize acts like an iteratable thing and you sort of like 
lazily eat. This is really interesting. Hmm. That's very cool. So then you swap the buffers. But when do you exit? When do you set uh, should quit game? When do you set it? Okay. Um, oh, okay. So you have something called events this frame and you iterate each events this frame. And then if it's quit, you just quit and that's it. But what the hell is events this frame? It's like boy next door, but events this frame. Okay. So let's give it a try. Uh, two, 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 two. I'm going to try to grab this thing one more time. Mm -hmm. So where is it coming from? It's only coming from gamepad and it's commented out. This is kind of sus. So it could be something uh, from the... In Maybe it's generated. Maybe it's generated some somewhere from the modules. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, okay. So we suppose this is the problem with this kind of stuff. This might be a using pull, pulling in into the scope. Maybe. Uh, oh, okay. I found it. I found it in the input. Oh, okay. Okay. Because it's not a, yeah, you have to keep in mind whether you are searching for a function or a variable, right? So for a function, you would search for double column for a variable, global variable, you would search for uh, a single column. So yeah. All right, so we found this thing and it's just like events this frame. Uh, okay, so and then you can just do that. All right, mm, events uh, this frame. Uh huh. So we have invaders simulate, invaders simulate, and we just run this thing every frame. And I suppose in events this frame are cleaned up after simp swap buffers. So I suppose that's basically what's happening here. Okay, so far so good. So far it is understandable, um, right? Or maybe it's reset in update window events. I don't know. So who knows? Events this uh, frame, and this is the thing I want to do in here, right? So it's actually a bit like that. Uh, should quit game is going to be true, and I guess that is it, right? So do we need anything else? I don't think so, actually. Uh, let me try to compile the Tetris, so we forgot the semicolon, anything else? And everything seems to be compiling, right? So, uh, there we go. Easy. GG, easy. So, I feel like, like, if you have, like, enough experience in programming in general, right? So, in C++ or in Rust, this is actually relatively straightforward, I'm not gonna lie. Especially with a lot of examples. I really like that there is a lot of examples, right? Because uh, it's quite often just like easier to like look up how something is done rather than reading like, uh, you know, some sort of essay about somebody's dog. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> because that's how majority of documentation for me looks like, right? It's some sort of essay about somebody's life instead of like actual useful information. And that's why I prefer examples. And there's a lot of examples in here. I can just like, copy paste things. It's pretty convenient. Uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty convenient. All right. So we just need to learn how to grab things, right? So we just need to learn how to grab things and everything is going to be okay. So I suppose also simp is uh, abstracted away, right? So that means these programs should also work on Windows, right? So it should also work on Windows. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, alrighty, so what do we want to do? I want to try to draw something, I suppose, right? What can I draw, though? Mm -hmm. Invaders, uh, invaders simulate, right? So let's take a look. Invaders simulate. Um, do, 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 do. Simulate invaders. I really like that. There's invaders simulate. 
So there's function invader simulate, and there's also functions sim simulate invaders. It's two separate functions. I really like that. Uh, okay, simulate invaders. There is probably some sort of a convention in here, right? There's definitely some sort of convention that allows you to distinguish between them, but yeah, if you don't know this convention, it's kind of interesting. Uh, okay, so here is the computation of the distance. So when once we're simulating them, we're not rendering them. So we're probably rendering them in a different place. Probably rendering them in a different place. And the question is, where do we render them? So if I do render, uh, just worked a render. Mm, render sprite uh, quad centered. Right, so here is the function. It accepts uh, a texture, so you can set particular shader uh, for a texture, but which shader? So you set some sort of a shader for a texture, but. Um, oh! Oh, I see. I see, I see what it means. Okay. So, and then you can do immediate quad. All right, so that's pretty cool. Maybe that's the function that we care about. Huh, I see, I see what, what is going on, right. So you just draw a quad, right? You just draw a quad, but if you want to draw a texture, you can set a shader that sets the texture for this specific immediate quad. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, let me take a look at the modules. Right, so probably have to go to simp, right. Uh, grab rn and uh, okay immediate quad uh, and there's a couple of overloaded things for immediate quad all right and i suppose it's just buffered into some sort of a buffer right and then it's sort of drawn in like one batch at the uh, swap right so somewhere at the swap uh, okay so that's pretty cool mm. all right but i wonder what are the coordinates in here? Most of the time you want to output quads, uh, quadrilaterals, where the four points don't need to be in any particular relation, the sides don't have to be the same length, uh, the angles don't have to be the same. We do assume that this quad represents a convex positive area. If in 3D we assume the uh, four vertices are polar. With quads, uh, but first we'll start with the simplest and axis aligned quad. Uh, with you just want to declare two corners x0, one. Okay, so I see what's going on in here. Mm. <clears throat> Wait till chat figures out there is also a get to rect module. I mean, we saw that, so and it's actually spelled with C, not K, right? So it's actually get to rect. Uh, here it is. So, um, create text display. I don't really know what it does, right? I saw the streams where this thing was developed, but I didn't really get into what it does exactly, so I'm not really sure. So there's some examples, right? Uh, Drag is in its period of initial creation and still uh, evolving quickly. Okay, so it's evolving quickly. Let's actually not look into that because it might be changing quite, uh, quite quickly. Um, all right, so I'm already, yeah, I'm not sure, okay. Um, I kind of want to refill my water, uh, I think that's what I need to do. Uh, Tetris, so immediate and invaders, right. I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure what are the um, the positions, right? What, what are the actual positions? So we have window width. So I presume, okay, so size X multiplied by half. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm -mm. You know what? I think what I need to do, I just need to try to... Um, Render an immediate quad and just see how it looks like. So, but the question is, uh, how can I do that? So P1, so I can make vector 2D, right? So I can, I can just do something like this. Um, mm -mm, but I do remember... Mm, mm -hmm. 
I kind of want to try this one. Right, I want to try this one instead. Uh, so this is going to be sim uh, zero. Right, maybe I have to do it like that zero zero, and let's say that it's going to have the width of ten. Right, so it's going to be ten by ten, uh, and let's see. I don't know why I'm doing it like that. <laughs> I think I'm stupid. Uh, and let's see. So the question is, how do you create a vector? So by analogy, I suppose to create a 4D vector, you have to do make vector four, right? So in a color, let's actually set color to red, right? So it's going to be uh, red. Um, I think this is how we create red, right? So this is how we create red. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. I don't know why I'm trying to mimic the style of, of this code, because I usually write it like that. Uh, okay, so let's try to compile this into I think. Is it going to compile? Okay, undeclared identifier make make vector four. Uh, let's go to modules. Um, right. mm -hmm. Grep. Alright, make vector four. Mm -hmm. So it's located in math. All right, sure. Ah, I don't know what I'm doing. Excuse me. Yeah, there we go. Compiles. It's pretty cool. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Okay, so let's see if we'll be able to see anything. Right, we're looking for a red uh, square. We don't see shit, uh, which is rather interesting. Uh, right. Oh, and we got some some weird stuff. Assertion failed. Try to immediate flash when no shader was set. Ooh, you have to set a certain certain shader, huh? So immediate. Okay, so maybe I have to set a specific shader to actually set the color or whatnot. Um, right. But I want to make a small break, by the way. Right. So it's a little bit intensive, right? Uh, because I need to keep in mind, keep in my head a lot of new information simultaneously. Um, so, mm -mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm. more versions you can do vector four, uh, probably. Um, so probably I can do that. Uh, so immediate quad. Mm -hmm. Set shader. I'm really curious about how many set shader functions do we have? Right. I'm really curious about that. Uh, set shader. Uh, grep. And um, let's see. Mm -mm. Set shader. Okay. You can set shader for color. Uh, I think this is what I need to do. I have a feeling. Right. So if you want to render a particular texture, you set shader for image. Right, and if you want to just have a color, you probably set shader for color because that kind of makes sense, right? It's like the most, the most thing that makes, the, the thing that makes the most sense. I'm, I'm really sorry for the English language. Uh, okay, so we didn't complain. And if I try to run the Tetris, <gasps> look at that. Got him. Okay, so it's so the coordinates are zero zero is at the left bottom corner, right? We know that for sure, and they have the uh, the resolution of the uh, of the entire screen, right? So okay, so I can work with that. I can already work with that. I can already put uh, like a square in there, and uh, I can also make it move probably and animate. That means I can make games already. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I want to do something like. Uh, like this. Tetris, there we go. A boom. So here it is. Isn't a POG? So now the next thing you can actually put this thing into some sort of a you know variable, right? So let's actually say that we're gonna have x uh, equal to zero and then y equal to zero. And I wonder, can it infer the type? Okay, so here I use integer literal. But immediate quad expects the float, right? So if I understand correctly, it expects the float. Immediate, uh, immediate quad. 
right. So to what extent uh, this language can infer the type? Can it actually see that this thing is supposed to be float and propagate that float in here and not depend on the uh, on the literal? That's what, what I'm interested in. Because it may actually assume that this is an integer to save on the compilation time, right? And put that on the developer to figure out what kind of type you have to put in here. Right, so it's actually really interesting. So let me see. Okay, the surgical did not match a possible overloads. Okay, so it inferred, I think it inferred an integer, right? So it did infer an integer. Uh, so possible overloads. It doesn't even say that it expected an integer. Type wanted vector 2, type given S64. Okay, so and essentially to fix that, you have to say that this is a float, right? And then it will be able to compile. Okay, so to save compilation time, to not implement a really fancy, um, you know, type inference, it just like infers the type only on the assignment, which makes sense. Like, I'm actually totally fine with that. Uh, right, because Rust would try to infer the type like from here, and that's why it compiles so slowly, right? So you always have to pay, like for all of the like nice feature, you always have to pay either with runtime or with the compile time. And I think this is a very good trade-off, right? Because I, I think the compilation time is more important than like a little bit of an inconvenience in here. Like, because for, for the programmer, it's like easy to put just extra stuff in here. Um, <clears throat> so, all right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, so what I want to do is just like, yeah. Um, let's also define something like uh, DX. Uh, and it's going to be something like this, right? DX, DY. As you can see, I'm not synchronizing anything with time, right? So we're going to do that a little bit later. Uh, and in here, I'm going to do DX. I'm really sorry if I write my event loop in a really dumb way, right? <laughs> because I'm not a game developer. So I really apologize, that, uh, apologize about that in advance. Uh, so here, we're going to have something like... Uh, can I do this kind of stuff? Right. Can we replace X with Y? Uh, right, I just want to see how this entire thing works. So, okay. Oh, yeah. I keep forgetting that this is the, um, you know, the actual value, right? So I have to do something like X plus and Y plus. Uh, all right, so there you go. So now you can have a moving, moving thingy. Mm. All right. So, and since this is a compile time stuff, I suppose I can say something like width is equal to 100. Maybe we can say um, quad size and quad size is going to be 100 uh, right and in here we can just put uh, quad size in here there we go uh-huh and it seems to be working it seems to be twerking that's pretty cool uh, so we also kind of don't handle the windows like resize events right we probably should because our window is pretty much resizable, right? And I really don't like this shade of uh, red. I think it's too aggressive. So let's actually make it, I don't know, less aggressive. Oh, it's pink. It's going to be pink. Is pink okay? I think pink is okay. Right. It actually looks pretty good. Mm -mm. Yeah. Okay. XX. Oh, so yeah, J has like a keys operator, right? So it basically, I think it converts the type in a C style, right? So it's a keys operator or something. There's also if X. I don't really know what this thing do, but yeah, I'm, I, like, I only started to learn this language, right? So I didn't really know much. Uh, I should probably go through the tutorials, uh, right? So let me, let me actually see. Uh, so there's a couple of like how to's, not a couple, but a lot of how to's, right? Almost that, well, I mean, some of them are missing, but yeah. So it's like literally the course, the the crash course on, on this language, which is kind of cool, right? So how to use uh, array literals. And there is like an explanation from John himself, right? It's almost like John narrating uh, this tutorial for you, and you have to read uh, all of these comments with his voice in your head, 
right? So while you're reading that, you have to like read it with his voice. It's very important. Otherwise, you won't actually understand anything. Um, so yeah, it's actually pretty cool. I should probably go through these kind of things uh, on myself to learn this language properly because this language has a lot of things to offer. Um, how type checking works for you, for example, polymorphic procedures. Um, I really like this one, temperance, which is like just basically a single, uh, single comment, single huge comment, uh, trying to convince you that writing simple code is important, right? So there is like a separate tutorial, um, you know, begging you, not really begging you, but uh, telling you that you have to like write as code as simple as possible. I really like that. <laughs> So I really like the entire code base because it's sort of like an exploration, right? So you can go through files, like read different comments, and it's really interesting, right? And I like how simple everything is. You can just like understand the code. I uh, really like that. Mm. Okay. Uh, so what I was doing, I don't remember, Tetris, uh, Jai. What I want you to do is my usual thing, where I would try to make the square bounce of the, um, you know, of the, of the borders, right? Uh, so to do that a little bit more effectively, I'm gonna actually start a little bit like with a little bit of padding, right? So it's gonna be a little bit of padding, and uh, every time I do something like this, so I suppose we have to do something like this. If x is um, Maybe let's put it this way, plus dx, right, is less than zero, or x plus dx plus uh, quad size is greater than windows, uh, window width, right? We, we do have window width defined somewhere, right? So it was window width. If this is true, what we have to do is to do dx uh, equal minus dx. By the way, I wonder, do I have to, can I just do something like this? Is that a correct code? Let me actually see, because, yeah, so if does not require any parentheses, neither does it require any curly braces, which is rather interesting, which makes this a completely correct code right so and it determines determines not determines determines right uh the like condition and body by how by the end of the expression so i suppose it tries to parse the expression and as soon as the expression is done it assumes the next thing to be a statement of the body i think this is how this works right because at least this is how i would personally do that if i wanted to do syntax like that um, okay, so query replace x with y. Uh, kind of interesting, but I mean, um, I think Rust simply does not allow you to have ifs without curly braces, right? So I don't remember actually. Uh, right, main.rs, right? If I have something like this, uh, I'm really sorry for writing Rust in, in Jai stream, but I just want to check it out. <laughs> right, so you can have a condition if true, right? And then you can do print ln uh, hello right if i try to compile that so what's gonna happen it's rust c excuse me uh i don't know rust either so i don't remember if you're supposed to look how fast the rust is look, look, just look at that compiler just look at it <laughs> sorry <laughs> right so it compiles if i put something like this in here i think it is not allowed in rust yeah it is not right so you're supposed to have curly braces here so this is how they solve um, <laughs> I always forget parentheses for if, uh, for if in other languages now very quickly got used to the Jai style. Yeah, I think like the parentheses are kind of obsolete. I suppose C added them because at the time of development, like the language has to be as simple as possible. So they added additional syntax noise, syntax noise to make the parsing a bit easier, right? So, because I had to implement the C compiler on PDP-10, right? And I tried to use PDP-10 in a virtual machine, and it's actually a very dumb machine. 
<laughs> it is really difficult to do anything useful on that machine, so I completely understand them. Uh, I completely understand their desire to make uh, language as simple as possible. Um, so we got some uh, subscriptions. Feng Chi, thank you so much for 35 months of tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, just joined, and the first thing I see is Rust. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Debated. So I just quickly wanted to check like how it's done in Rust, but in reality we're like doing giants, so this is what we do. I I'm sorry for rat holing on the syntax. I know that syntax is not really important, but uh, I did it anyway. So I hope I didn't miss anyone who subscribed. Thank you, thank you so much for subscription. Even though I don't get any money, I still don't want to skip anyone because people it's almost said wasted spend their money. Uh, you didn't really waste money, right? Because you, you get, you know, what do you get? You get pixels, you, you get the emotes, right? And that's what's important in life. Um, okay, so this is supposed to be, I think, oh, tokenization is actually kind of meh, but yeah. Okay, so there is some very common mistakes, mistake in the, not really, not really sure in mistake, but... Um, style choice in in the programming language modes in emacs there is an action move forward and backward be between words right so as you can see when i move forward and backward this is recognized as a single word which kind of makes sense right it does make sense but uh, some of the modes like c plus plus mode for instance uh, let me actually show you uh, which is actually super slow, but one thing it does right, it actually tokenizes things slightly differently. So if I say move word forward, it actually moves until underscore, which actually makes it a little bit easier to refactor things, right, as you can move between this stuff, right. And this one does not tokenize it like that, and it's a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit inconvenient for me. Luckily, Jai is an open mode, so I can probably uh, fix that. I just wanted to mention that for some reason, I don't know why. Uh, because I find it really convenient, like being able to jump between words, but the uh, edges of the word are determined by also underscore, not only space, uh, which is super convenient. Uh, Probot, what's up? Mm -mm. All right. Anyway, so let me also maybe speed up the stuff. I can actually put something like velocity in here, right? And then say uh, velocity, let's say, is going to be two. All right. Uh -huh. Okay, so let me give it a try. All right, so what about making it even faster? What about five? Mm -mm. Yeah. Okay. So it is working, which is nice. Huh. Is it affected by... Okay, so since we don't handle the resize, right, so it's sort of clamped to this specific site, which, which is fine, right? So I don't plan to, uh, to actually make it resizable, but apart from that, everything seems to be working, right? So this is my first graphical program in... <laughs> it's definitely not the Tetris. Like, it says Tetris, but it's nothing like Tetris, that's for sure. <laughs> right. Uh, okay, for Tetris, we'll have to put some sort of a grid in here, I suppose. Uh, and also, there is a corner hidden here. Mm. Mm -mm. like the opposite from the office. I never watched Office because I'm not American. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, can I draw lines, by the way? Or do I need to draw lines? Because I can always do the, like, a checker pattern, right? So I can simply do the checker pattern. Uh, and that way you don't really need specific lines or anything like that. Mm, could make the velocity increase with every hit of the border? That sounds like a very interesting idea. So let me try the following thing. What if the velocity... Oh man! Look at that! I have a compile time value. If I want to change it into a runtime value... Single character change. Honestly, 
the syntax of Jaya looks kind of weird, but it's genius at the same time. It's sort of like designed around evolving the code in a particular direction. So you start with some of the things being hard-coded, some of the things being compiled time. And then you obviously want to evolve them to be more flexible. So moving, syntactically moving from compile time stuff to runtime stuff is very easy. And I really like that. It's actually, it's kind of cool. Another interesting thing that I like about J that I was always talking about even before I got the beta is its switch case. Uh, many people, when they see the switch case of Jai, they get turned off because what the fuck? Why is that if? What the hell is wrong with you? Why would you make a switch like that? It's fucking genius. I'm gonna tell you why. So, uh, John always says that it's gonna be changed in the future, but this thing should not change. This shit is fucking genius, uh, like I'm gonna tell you. So, one of the main problems, like syntactical problems, I, I do understand that syn syntax is like a very not important thing, but this is important. Uh, one of the problems I see in all of the languages is the problem of transitioning from a single if to a switch case. Right. So, transitioning from if to a switch case is a very common thing that programmers do while they evolve the code. Right. So, usually you start with something like, okay, I have if x is equal to 69, I'm going to do one thing. But then you realize that x can be not only 69, but maybe also 420, right? And then you do if else x equal 420, and then you realize, I want to transition that into switch case. And now you have to rewrite like the whole construction. And it's like literally the whole construction just to get here. Uh, so 69, case 420, and it's so painful. And a lot of languages like don't care about that, and nobody ever solved that. Right, so now look how it is done in, in Jaya, right? You start with uh, 69, right? You start with 69, then you realize, oh, so I can have more things. I'm gonna take this 69, case 69, boom, I switch to switch case. Just like that. So you wanna transition from a single if to a switch case, you just take this thing and you move to switch case, and that's it. And this is something that really frustrates me in uh, in Rust because in Rust it's actually made even worse, <laughs> <laughs> because you also have if let if let x something, which is even more difficult to transition to something like match x some whatever, because they're so freaking different. This is genius. I'm telling you, when I first saw this thing, I was poked out of my mind because it's so fucking good. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem to solve it if you have else, but anyway, so I like it anyway, for some reason. Mm, yeah. Anyway. All right, so what I was doing. Um, mm, mm, mm. Does anyone remember what I was doing? Oh, I, want, I want you to make it actually speed up every time we, we do this thing. So we start with the velocity like um, maybe, I don't know, maybe five, right? And dx dy is actually going to be just one, right? So it's going to be just one. But uh, instead of like incrementing by dx, we're going to be actually multiplying it by velocity, right? So velocity, there we go. So and every time we hit this thing, Right. Every time we hit this thing, we're also going to increase the velocity uh, by one. Right. We're increasing it by one. Mm. Velocity plus one. And there we go. Okay. Okay. So let's see. It's going fucking crazy. What the fuck? <laughs> I think it's going to blow up at some point. I think it's going to stop at some point because it's... Uh, yeah, okay. So it, it basically stops at some point because any movement is essentially moving outside. So it's not moving anywhere. Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> God mode. Yeah. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. It looks a little nervous, yeah, it does. All right, so I wanted to make a small break because I'm already streaming for one hour, right? So I want to refill my water and stuff like that. And after the break, we're going to try to at least set the uh, layout of the Tetris, like maybe did some sort of like a grid um, and we'll see how it goes, right? So, okay, let's make some break and... All right, so uh, we need to probably draw the Tetris grid, right? So um, usually I think the grid is not drawn on the on the whole thing. Uh, usually I have like a section in the middle, right? A vertical section, uh, right? And where you have a grid and all the blocks is follow are following and stuff like that. So let me let me see. So if I try to run uh, the Tetris, so we can just pick like a third of the screen and call that a grid. How about that? I think we can do that, um, right? So and uh, because of that, we want to have some sort of like constants, right? That define um, that define the layout of the screen, so to speak. Um, so that means we can have grid uh, X, right? So this is where the grid starts, right? And because it's like a third of the width, uh, we have to say um, um, width multiplied by 33 or maybe divided by 3. Uh, all right, we divided by 3 plus um, plus this thing. So that means, uh, well, it actually, this is where it starts. Right, so this is essentially where it starts. Uh, grid Y is going to start at zero. And also you have to keep in mind that uh, the zero zero is the, you know, bottom left corner, because I still think in screen coordinates where it's top uh, left corner, but it's actually bottom one. It's like more of a like open jailish. <clears throat> Open Jewish thing. Mm -hmm. All right. So, and uh, I also need to keep track of the grid uh, width and grid height. So I suppose I can call this a grid width, right? So this is a grid width. And because of that, grid X is the grid uh, width. And grid height is the height of the entire window. Right, so it's going to be window height. And we can also try to do the following thing where I just select everything and align by this thing. And there we go. Look how pretty it looks. Really like that. Okay. So we have grid X, grid Y, and width and height. Okay. So I wonder if I can also make this some sort of a color. Right, so can I say... Uh, grid color, right, and then say something like this. People said that I can have like a struct, um, struct literals. Do we have a tutorial for that? Let me let me actually see. So uh, how to struct literals? Okay, so this is where we can have struct literals. Okay, so this is how you do them, right? I wonder if I can do a similar thing. Um, do I have to specify the fields for them? Do I have to specify the fields for them? Mm, looks like I do have to do that. Right, so... Or maybe, can I just do make vector 4 and hope that it's just gonna work at compile time? Uh, let's try to find out. Let's try to build this entire thing. And, uh, okay, so it says, attempt to perform a procedure call outside of the body of another procedure. Calls and many other imperative expressions can only occur inside procedure bodies. Uh, here is the procedure B. Oh, oh my god, this is... Thank you. Thank you for telling me where it is located. This is so nice. Wait a freaking second. Uh, because that's exactly... Why can't you just go there? <laughs> oh, this is because it's it's parsed with this thing. Okay, can I find file at, at here? Uh, 354. 
Uh, okay, so because I want you to know the name of this thing, right? So I just want you to know uh, the name of this thing so I can pull it in here. Uh, and where is the definition of factor 4? It's x, y, z, w. So I can try to do something like this. Might as well actually uh, do it like that. Mm -hmm. x, uh, y, uh, z, w. Yeah, it's a, it's a very nice error message, I really like that. Okay, so type mismatch, uh -huh. given flow 32, uh-huh, uh-huh, ooh, make vector, how do you type wanted binary dot the reference type given float 32 ah you don't have to have dots in here i see i think i think that's what's happening in here okay uh, yeah, yeah okay so that's cool so i have everything i wanted to have okay so i don't need this stuff anymore i can just simply remove uh, pretty much everything right so none of that matters anymore um, and now I can try to write an immediate quad, right, so it's going to be grid x, grid y, grid x plus grid width, right, so that's this thing, uh, grid y, uh, grid height, and here we're going to have grid color, there we go. So that way, we're going to have an actual grid, which is going to be like a column, right? So it's going to be some sort of a column. Uh, yep, so here's the column, right? So it's, it's like a third of the screen, right? So it's a third of the screen, which is rather interesting. Does it have to be a third? I think it has to be a little bit bigger, right? I think it has to be maybe, um, maybe half of the screen. Right, but because of that, um, yeah, it's going to be slightly, slightly more interesting. Uh, so let's say that it's going to be um, half of the screen, right? So this is a half of the screen. Because of that, X has to be somewhere at the center. So it's essentially grid width, half of the um, window width minus half of the grid width, right, minus half of the grid width, so something like this, I think, I think that's a good way to, to do that, yeah, there we go, so that way I can actually, like, uh, make it um, wider, or also make it uh, thinner, right, narrower, narrower, is, is that the word, I don't speak English, I'm sorry, so I can also make it something like this, though, we can say that the grid width is equal to grid height, window height. And that is rather interesting, right? Because maybe I want to make it, maybe I want to keep it always square, right? Maybe that's what I want to do. And uh, it's going to be only, and depending on which sort of side of the screen is bigger or smaller, we're going to have either window uh, height in here or window width, right? And maybe this is something that I want to do at compile time. You know what I mean? And I wonder how you do that at compile time. I know that there is something like if, like compile time if, uh, which is rather interesting, right? So we can actually give it a try. If window height is smaller than window width, uh, we do this thing. I think this should work. I have a strange feeling that this should work. And it did in fact work. Uh, and then we can say otherwise. I suppose otherwise doesn't, does not require anything in here, so it just follows. Uh, otherwise we have to do window width. Right, does it still compile? It seems to be still compiled. Right, and now if I swap them, what if this is going to be 600 and this is 800? Uh, and just worked right so this entire thing just worked so i really like that 
<laughs> I really like how I can... Well, I mean, so far it doesn't really do anything that Seek could not do. No, Seek cannot do that. The preprocessor, I think, can it do that? I think preprocessor can do that. Yeah, yeah it can do that. But it's still pretty cool, actually. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So that's actually... All right. I mean, I think it's something special, but it's just like something, something pretty cool. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So, and that way we sort of keep it, uh, you know, <coughs> um, keep it um, square, I suppose. Though, is it really square? I think there's something fucked up in here. I think there's something fucked up in here. Uh... Yeah, let's actually not do that for now. Uh, always keep it like height uh, because I don't plan to change it very, very often. But yes, this is something to like keep in mind. Um, okay, because it's not supposed to be this way. Yeah, it's just like to keep it square. Like if it's the other side is smaller, I have to I have to do it completely differently, right? So that means I have to have a padding yeah i have to have different y so x and y should also switch places that's very interesting okay so if window uh height is smaller than window width this entire thing has to be under the condition otherwise we like compute this entire thing completely differently uh first of all this becomes width right this become width. Um, mm -hmm. And um, this becomes that. Oh, okay. I think. So for now, if I put it this way, here it is. And if I swap them around, That's what I wanted, yes. That's what I was talking about. That's what I was talking about, okay. So, but do we wanna keep it square? I don't know, it's just in case we wanna do that. In case we wanna do that, it's gonna be there. Right, and this like half, this is like uh, how much of the width or height is it, is it going to take, right? So that's basically what this thing is. Uh, and we can say something like grid, uh, percent like how much percentage does it take and it could be half uh, like so and we can uh, quite easily just uh, replace that so it's a grid uh, percent and I really like how so far all of that is a compile time stuff I really like that <laughs> I'm not even doing anything runtime all of that is purely just figuring out compiled uh, compile time values right this is actually really cool. <laughs> I have a kick out of that. This is so cool. This is such a simple thing, right? So, but at the same time, it is very, very cool. Um, okay. So, we are going to have rows and columns, right? So, that's what we want to have. So, a certain amount of rows. But since everything is square, we may just say that we have grid count right so if i say grid count 10 that means it's a basically 10 by 10 since the entire thing is square um it's going to be 10 by 10. so here i'm going to say note uh, we are trying to keep the uh board it's a, it should be called board not the grid but i already call it grid uh try to keep uh, grid square for some reason uh, i don't know why just feel like it. right so that there's no particular reason to do that but i just do that anyway uh so grid size is essentially going to be um uh, hmm. so since grid width i could have just kept grid size and stuff like that mm. okay Mm -hmm. So maybe for now I'm, I'm gonna keep rows and columns because who knows, maybe it's not gonna be a square uh, for very long. Right, so it's gonna be rows and columns 
then we can say grid cell width which is essentially grid width divided by grid columns right so this is the width and then we can have height and this one is rows right something like this uh cool so this one has to be integer and this one okay so my favorite compile time feature so far has been baking a font or small image into executable so you can just ship the executable without other files. So easy and enjoy. Yeah, so in C, I usually write the second meta program to do that, right? So there is a program, separate program that takes the images or fonts, right? And generates byte array out of them, which you include then in your C program and then compile the second program. This is how we usually do that in C, which is really, uh, cucumbersome, right? So in, in here, I suppose it's just like pretty straightforward. Mm. <clears throat> mm -mm. <clears throat> what do you do as your day job? I'm not employed. I'm just a troll on the internet. That's who I am. Okay, so let's actually try to render something useful, I suppose. Uh, we can go ahead and try to do the following thing. So this is going to be a row, right? So this is row from zero. By the way, does this thing include the last value? Because I don't remember. Uh, just a second. Mm, just a second, just a second. Main, uh, if I do something like zero, ten, right? And then I'm going to say print uh, it. I probably want to put some sort of a new line in here. Okay. And let's give it a try. And it does include it. Okay, so try to keep that in mind. So that means that in here, when I'm rendering the background, right, when I'm rendering the background, uh, I have to do row zero grid uh, rows. Actually, call uh, calls minus one right, for row zero grid rows minus one and there we go so we have a row and column pretty cool so and this is where we can try to do this thing so grid x so i have to do something like let's put it this way right so i want to render x and y then x plus uh we can say w y h color right so x is going to be in here, column multiplied by grid cell width, right? So we, we have that. Uh, y is a row multiplied by grid cell height. Uh, w is a grid cell width. Uh, H is a grid cell height. So is there any like ternary operator or something like that or if as an expression do we have any professional Jai developers in the chat what is the if as an expression or ternary operator or something like that is there something like this because i just like i need to construct the color <laughs> somehow um, so if x okay so let me let me try to see some examples so if x is about that, okay, um, thank you, thank you so much. I'm gonna just grab for if x, okay. Oh, okay, so it is actually that. Oh, okay, so x stands for expression, right? How do you sustain my, uh, yourself? I used to receive uh, money from Twitch and then I stopped and now I have a little bit of savings. So I'm living right now on my savings until I run out of them. And as soon as I run out of them, I'll probably start searching for a job somewhere here. Or maybe I can try to find something online. So in 2022, I can probably try to freelance for crypto. I haven't decided yet. We'll see. We'll see about it. Uh, okay, so F, uh, X means expression, right? Uh, based need. Well, I'm not sure if I'm based. To be fair. 
I'm still not sure what base means, um, but I'm neat for sure. Uh, okay, so color is going to be grid color, right? If it's zero, otherwise, right? Otherwise, it has to be something like this, right? Uh, so command line if oh it's actually then it has then else and whatnot right so maybe it's optional but okay so it is this here uh, grid color otherwise we can put a background color in here which is which is understandable I'm just thinking if I put this entire thing into a structure is there any way to spread that structure or is there any overloads for clear render targets so that's a it's a better question i suppose um mm -mm, so simp compile grep rn okay there's only one um i can always overload that myself but um that would be kind of cool if I had the struct, then I could just spread it like that, but maybe it's it's not important. It's just like it's a, uh, it's a more of a syntactical, not important thing. So, yeah. So what I want you to have here is a background color, right? So let's call it background color. Uh, and I'm going to put this entire thing into the background color. Right. Vector 4, uh, like so, is going to be x. Uh, y, Z, W, like so. Uh, all right. So and the question is, how am I going to easily use that? Can I do something very stupid as using background <laughs> and then just X, Y, Z, W? Can I do that? It would be kind of cool if I could. Uh, so let me see. <laughs> uh, I heard about using, right? Uh, Undeclared identifier. Okay. So so that worked. Uh, that actually worked. Uh -huh. So what we have here. Uh, procedure call did not match possible overloads. So what was the problem there, officer? So grid caller is supposed to be vector four. Uh, oh, right. Possible overloads. Uh, type float wanted byte. Excuse me. Mm. Mm -mm. Uh, holy shit, what are you talking about? Um, Oh, you're talking about this thing. So this thing actually worked, right? So I suppose it worked. But I'm not sure about that one. So what's up with that? Uh, if plus row, right? So if I do something like this, uh, grid color, otherwise background color. Overloading is kind of weird, not gonna lie. Uh, okay, so we didn't like uh, did not match any overloads. Is that because... Um, so, immediate quad... Float by given S64. I suppose it has something to do with that, because calls and rows are integers, right? They're integers, but... Uh, Actually, grid. I see what's going on. Uh, grid color calls is this one. Grid width. What is grid width? Aha, uh -huh, I see. Okay, all of that is integers, but I want them to be specifically, specifically other things. So this has to be an integer, right? So this has to be an integer. Um, but this has to be float. Does it have to be float? I kind of want it to be float, honestly. Uh, and I also want this to be float. Grid width and grid height. Or do I? I'm not sure. Maybe not. I still haven't decided. 
but anyway, so I suppose we can try to do something like this. Right. Uh, maybe I'm gonna just convert this stuff like that. I'm not sure if it's a good idea. Uh -huh. It's because both of those things, they are integers. Uh, right, they are integers. So let me see. Uh, couldn't match possible overloads. Uh, match here, here. Okay, so none of that worked. Uh, so let me see. I have another idea. Uh, so there is another interesting syntactical piece in here, right? So you can do stuff like that. You can specify the type, right? I think. Right, uh, mismatch, okay, so, and then can I say xx like this? Uh, I can, okay. Uh -huh. Okay, so, no problem, okay, so I have main, uh -huh. and there we go. So I have a checker pattern, uh, which does not respect the grid, um, the grid position so we have to actually respect that so if i remember correctly grid x right and by the way grid x is supposed to be a uh, float i think i'm pretty sure it's supposed to be float i want to actually be specific about that can i do stuff like that i'm, I'm pretty sure i can uh will it complain oh, i didn't complain actually uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And uh, two, 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 two. so I have to do grid x plus grid y plus. So that's what we're doing right here. Okay. So that's what we have. So it's not really intended to be like chess, right? It's just to indicate the uh, the edges of the of the grid, right? So that's the in, entire purpose of this entire stuff. But I suppose to be a little bit more subtle, right? So the background has to be so the 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 contrast between the cells has to be not that big, right? So I think we have to have grid color zero, and then grid color one. Mm, something like this which is basically slightly darker right so just slightly darker mm -hmm. great color one all right now let's take a look at this thing uh yeah something like this and of course it doesn't have to be red right so i'm just talking about the contrast right the contrast itself has to be like slightly different something like this and on top of that i have to check how the color works right so let me try to do if um, if x, um, if x, then grid color, uh, color, color zero, else grid color one, All right? So and then uh, I can try to do something like this. Color. Okay, so we have here and cool. Mm -mm. I kind of want to handle the key, uh, Q. When I press Q, I want to actually quit. So maybe this is something that I want to do as well. Um, so if I go into the invaders, key. Mm. Events this frame. If event type keyboard and the key, and the key, uh, okay, arrow left. Uh -huh, so I can yoink that. All right, so we iterate through the events, then if the event type is a keyboard, right? And in here, so we have to do something like if else. And this is a good time to try to turn this into a case, right? Can we easily turn this into a case? Uh, maybe, maybe we can, maybe we cannot, I'm not sure. Uh, so let me see, case, yeah, so this is how it's done. Um, so it's gonna be like this. But when I do break, it's supposed to break from the loop, I think. I think it's supposed to break from the loop, so it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, and then keyboard. All right, so this is the keyboard, and I can just like do something like this instead. Uh -huh. 
cool. Uh, mm -hmm. And essentially, maybe I can, can even do if event key code equal to, so it says arrow left, but do we have uh, key Q or something? So I need to go to modules, right? So I need to go to the modules. And I want to grab uh, arrow left. Okay. Uh huh. All right. So this is what we found in here. Mm hmm. That's a key code. Escape. But I'm not sure about these specific like characters. Maybe I can live with escape. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. Uh, uh, I can live with escape at least for now. Right. Uh huh. So equal to escape. And if it is escape, I suppose I can just quit as well. Hmm. And break does not break from the switch. It breaks from the from the loop, I think. Uh, it's char Q, I think. Oh, I can just compare it with the, with the, with the character. Okay, I'll give it a try. Uh, but for now, I'm going to just like, this is not what I want. All right, so... Yeah. Oh. Wait, what? Oh, because I copy pasted. So I'm already getting tired. So I really apologize if I'm starting to just like do weird stuff. Okay, if I press escape, it actually worked. Uh, so let me try to do the character Q. Right, it's supposed to be something, something like this. Uh, okay, it worked and it didn't work. Okay. So, but maybe I have to put like. Um, and this thing is it gonna work? No, it, it didn't work. So the character just character didn't work, and I think this is probably has to. Maybe it's not a key code. You see, um, it's not a key code. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So yeah. All right. So I, I think I'm, I can live with escape. All right. So I'm just uh, gonna keep escape, and that's fine at least for now. Doesn't really matter that much. Uh, to, 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 to. So uh, it would be kind of cool if I could just make it a tiny bit more subtle. Uh, let me try to maybe make it greenish, if you know what I mean. Uh, Something like this, right? Make it greenish, but on top of that, um, also a little bit more dark. Uh, is that good? It, it's actually it actually sucks. <laughs> what about like half? But if I'm gonna make it half, it's not gonna be that distinguishable from everything else. So this one 25, uh, this one 25, and this one probably just 20, right? So let me see. I really hate it, but <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, let me try to make it like three. Uh, maybe there is also a way to like hot reload this entire. This is the most disgusting green color I've ever produced. But <laughs> anyway, I'm not a I'm not an artist. You know what I mean? Uh, also, maybe. Getting rid of these zeros would be a good idea. Just will make it a little bit more compact. Um, oh, this actually looks nice. I really like it. Look at that. Mm -mm. All right, so we have a grid, right? So, and the next thing we need to do, we need to render some sort of a shape, right? So, uh, we need to render some sort of a shape. And the question is, how can we render a particular shape? Um, I suppose we can hard code a function that just renders a certain shape. 
Um, and it also would be nice to maybe extract this entire stuff into separate uh, function, right? So instead of like computing the coordinates of the of the square all the time, right? It would be nice to just provide the row and column of the cell, and it will just like do that uh, do that for you, right? So let's actually introduce something like a render cell, uh, and here we're gonna have column. Uh, which is S64, I suppose, and row S64. And it's not going to return anything. Um, right. It is going to just do this thing. Uh -huh. um, do we have to set the shader for color? Maybe not. Uh, hmm. I think I'm going to call it immediate, immediate cell quad. Right. Okay, so that's cool immediate cell quad uh, and that way I should be able to do something like immediate uh, immediate cell quad um, column and row do I have to provide the core I think I have to provide the core yes yes I have to provide the core like so so this is gonna be the core and because of that immediate cell quad should accept the color in here right? So uh, vector four, and there we go. So that's what I wanted. Okay. Uh, now, uh, let me compile the entire thing. Does it work? Does it work? It seems to be working. It seems to be twerking. So the reason why I wanted to have that is because now I should be able to do something like immediate cell quad, and I can say, okay, at this specific quad, at, uh, at cell, at, at, at the cell zero, zero, render it with something like vector four, uh, X, like, like a red. Right. Mm, maybe there is like a constant red. Right. Is there something like a red? That would be actually kind of nice. Right. This is what it is. Uh, all right, so as you can see, we rendered this thing. And of course, probably don't want to make it like this. Uh, let's actually make it uh, like this. I probably should come up with a better palette. Yeah, there we go. So it's going to be pinkish. Disgusting. <laughs> I really hate it. Um, so maybe... Yeah, let's keep it like that. So, and now I should be able to, like draw it right so the first one is column so that means i'm gonna draw it on the next column right so this is the next column there we go as you can see i have two of them uh then another one right on the next column and then another one on the same column but a little bit higher right so and you can see i just drew a shape right you see what i mean i just like drew a shape uh, okay so, and now I can probably extract that into something like um, um, immediate, immediate shape, where I could specify column, S64, and row, um, like offset, right? offset column and offset row, and render that shape with a specific offset. Uh, right. Um, so. Maybe I should call it something more like O call, right? So this one has to be O call plus, um, O row plus, and this one could be extracted into something like shape caller, right? So this is a shape caller. Uh, yep, shape caller. We can put it in here. <laughs> wouldn't you also want rotation of the shape wouldn't i want a, a tetris fully implemented and you know why i don't have a tetris fully implemented right in front of me because i'm in the middle of implementing it <laughs> oh why tetris is unfinished why are you implementing an unfinished game in unfinished language? Mm -mm. Okay. Jesus Christ, people. Uh, all right. 
so uh, let me see. Mm, okay, this one is. Oof. Oh, it's supposed to be something like this. Mm -mm. Do they gain, negate themselves? They become finished, probably. Uh, okay, so let me see. Uh, I probably actually want to. Do I want to render it like that? Yeah, I probably want to render it like that. So let me just keep it like this. Uh, immediate, uh, immediate shape. Right. So this is a shape, and I can say uh, zero zero. Right. So now I have something like this. There we go. But then at any point I can say, okay, so let's actually render it a little bit higher. Right. So there we go. So it's a little bit higher, and actually uh, can make it. Not really fall. I don't think it's gonna fall. But yeah. Mm -mm. Mm. Why implement unfinished features? <laughs> mm. <sighs> Whew. Um, okay, so let me, let me see, let me see, so, and since I have these coordinates in here, I can actually put them somewhere here, right, I can put a column, zero in here, and a row, one in here. Uh, so if all of that goes outside, by the way, if you try to render a cell outside of the grid, maybe you should never try to even render it, right? So, for instance, if column is less than zero or column is greater or equal than grid width, you just return. And similarly, uh, you have row and you have... It's actually not. It's actually grid calls, uh, grid rows have something like this. If you're outside, you basically just like do that. Uh, Zone 84, thank you so much for the sub and everyone who uh, subscribed. Really, really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, so immediate cell quad. So if you try to go outside, it's never going to be rendered, right? So that's, that's what I wanted. Uh, now, so this is going to be column and this is going to be row. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, and the next thing we need to do, we need to probably have some sort of like a timeout. You know what I mean? Uh, because the the Tetris is going to play with a certain step, right? It's going to play with a certain step. Uh, but what's going to be the step? To we can have something like step timeout, right? Uh, timeout, which is going to be just um Maybe step interval. I think this is something that I already did with the snake, right? So, uh, so this is a step interval. Yeah, I already did something like that. So step interval, and uh, it is going to be let's say maybe 100 milliseconds, right? So uh, yeah, maybe I'm gonna do that in seconds. There we go. So it's 100 milliseconds. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Okay. So this is a step interval, but to actually properly animate everything, I need delta time, right? So I need to properly, uh, you know, calculate the delta time. And I don't do that, but I can copy paste that code from the invaders, right? So let's actually go ahead and do that. So we have last time, something that's called last time. And uh, I'm pretty sure it's a global variable, right? So yeah, let's put it this way. So this is the last time. Okay, and then how do I do that? Uh, invader simulate, and then I do... Okay, so that's a very interesting way of doing that. So it's a delta, uh, float 64. So that means now... And where do I compute that? I do that in invader simulate. I do that after I handled sort of these things. All right. Uh, current DT. So this is delta time. And after I've done everything, I suppose I should set the last time, right? So, but where do I set it? Oh, okay, so I'm actually done. So this is also DT max. Huh. Oh, okay, I see what's going on here. 
Anyway, so uh, let me let me do the following thing. Mm -hmm. Now, delta last time, current DDT. Um, do I really want to have DT max? Do I want to? Do I want to? That's actually a pretty cool idea. I think. I think. I think I'm gonna use that idea. I think I'm going to use that idea, and boom! I have current DT, which I can use to do different things. Uh, okay, so let me try to compile this entire stuff and see. Okay, get time is not available. It's probably because it's located somewhere in time. Okay, so. We have to go to modules, right? So let's go to modules and grab our n get time, uh, right? So where is it located? Okay, it's located in basics. Uh, oops, oops. Don't I have basics in Tetris? I do have them. So the question is, what the hell? And declare the identifier last time. Oh, okay. I see. Because, yeah. Because of reasons. Uh -huh. All right. So everything compiles. Now, what I want to do. Um, so after we handled everything uh, and stuff like that, it's probably a really dumb way of organizing everything. It's probably not going to be super responsive, but I mean, it's just like my first iteration over that. Um, so I'm going to do step time out and I'm going to subtract the current DT right so current DT if step time out is less than zero just zero okay. I'll have to reset the step time out to the step interval right so this is a step interval and then I'm gonna increment the row right so increment it by one so that should do the trick Okay, so yeah, did you, did you see that? Did you see that? That was actually pretty cool, I think. So let's make it half of a second. Uh, yep. So we have a step. Well, it's supposed to actually, I think, fall from from the sky, right? Uh, I can set the row. I can set the row to be something like grid rows. Uh, grid rows so this is a grid rows and then I can make it fall right so I'm gonna be subtracting this thing I think right uh, and there we go I probably also need to handle like keys uh, right so we can have something like this in here uh, so it's that then I can take this stuff turn it into that so this is escape and then cause arrow left right arrow left is gonna be row no actually column plus one and right is column minus one right and what I want to do is both of these things row and column to be global values right so we can oh, we don't really have to do that right no, no, we don't have to do that because it's, it's visible there. Uh, okay, what do we have in here? Um, okay. Mm, yeah, maybe something like this. Okay. Huh. Uh, column minus plus. So we can just move around. It's a really dumb thing, right? But uh, yeah, I probably need to take a break. <laughs> this is not a Tetris for sure, but it was like a, a... It's a renderer for Tetris, right? So this is a renderer for Tetris. Uh, I think I'm gonna stop it here. Right, I think I've got a pretty good progress on this entire thing. Keep in mind that I'm programming this language for the first time ever. Right. This is my like literally first first uh, time doing this entire thing. And by the end of two hours, I'm already uh, completely exhausted. 
right? Because I have to take in new information like all the time and it's just like so exhaustive on my brain. So obviously I won't be able to implement like a full feature Tetris uh, on a language that I never programmed before. So, but I implemented some sort of a renderer for it. You know what I mean? Right, so maybe I'm gonna turn this into a series where I finish the Tetris in, in Jaya. Why not? I think that would be actually kind of cool idea. Right, so we'll get some sort of a render, right? And uh, I'm gonna continue developing this thing uh, on the stream, right? Let's actually turn this into a series because it's kind of interesting. It's like, it's a super fun language, uh, right? What makes it fun is a huge standard library that is implemented in a very simple way that is easy to explore. That's what makes it fun, at least right now, right? Because I don't have like a full knowledge of the language, like like a better knowledge of the language, because there's a lot of interesting metaprogramming features and stuff like that. But so far, uh, what I see, if I use it as just C, it is extremely fun. Um, really like that. So, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Is that something worth continuing doing? Because it's, it's kind of fun. I want I want to continue this Tetris. I want to actually make it like a proper Tetris out of this. Uh, so, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Isn't that Pogue? Pogue. Um, right. Everyone is quiet. <laughs> uh, mm -mm 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 all right. Uh, mm, also, maybe one where you go through the written tutorials. I'm not sure um, if going through written tutorials is that interesting of, a, of an idea because it's not a particularly creative process. It doesn't really stimulate my brain very much. Uh, and I'm not a big fan of like, you know, reading things. I like like to try things. <laughs> but maybe with this language I have to actually sit down and learn it properly, otherwise I won't discover like uh, good features, right? Uh, you know what I mean, but I don't know. Mm. Okay, so that's it for today. Thanks everyone who's watching right now, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much yet again for inviting me into beta. It's actually super fun, I really like this language so far. Um, of course, it's not finished, but uh, it's going to be absolutely great when it's finished, actually. So it's actually, it has a huge potential, that's for sure. Uh, okay, so let's maybe raid somebody. I haven't raided anyone for quite some time, so maybe I should raid somebody. Is anyone streaming anything epic on science and technology section of Twitch? Uh, right, so is anyone streaming, you know, Jai? The legendary stream yeah maybe maybe this i swear to god it's either my laptop is dying or twitch becoming slower and slower every day i don't know which one is that <laughs> oh my god friends is going away in may 25th isn't it already gone i think i don't know it's kind of weird uh all right so yeah, I'm, I'm streaming from a 10 years old laptop, so that's why everything is super slow for me, so I really apologize for that. 100% it is Twitch becoming slower and slower every day, yeah, that's a, that's a huge problem. All right, so what do we have in here? Uh, Engineered only 99 errors in Go, JavaScript. Do you guys have any suggestions of who to raid right now? So we have Rust Game Dev. Um, I don't know. Game Engine from Scratch. Screamlark. Okay, I know that he was raided by John Blow recently. So maybe actually, let's actually raid him one more time. <laughs> uh, okay, so. <laughs> Twitch is aging faster than your laptop. Yeah, that's probably the case. Um, alrighty. He struggles with English. Is that something that might be hard to follow? I don't know. You you guys suggest who to, to read. Do, do you guys have anyone in mind? Because I don't know. Okay, so uh, nobody suggests anything. 
All right, so um, I think I'm not going to uh, raid anyone. Um, all right. Uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. I love you. Mwah.